Well, welcome everybody to another Women Lead Online Forum. Uh, today, we are going where truth is the new black. And be without further ado, I just want to say that my name is Patty Vargas, and, and I work with CWI in facilitating and putting together these online forums. And my partner in crime here is Sean Marie Turry, and she'll be our facilitator and guide and leader through this journey of Truth is the New Black tonight. So without further ado, there you go, Sean Marie. It's in your court. Thank you so much, Patty. And ladies, thank you so much for being here uh, to another wonderful edition of Truth is the New Black. And this is where we get into really juicy, deep, truth-filled, soulful conversations around everything and anything that has to do with your business and feeling good and living a life that you truly love. And I'm so happy that today, as our expert guest, I want to introduce everybody to Laura Jane. Laura Jane, thank you so much for being with us tonight. Ah, oh, I'm so honored. And I've been following this series, doing it live, and it's like touched me and my creation so much. So I'm, it's a great manifestation to be here, really, for well, me. Wonderful. <laughs> so well, we're you. definitely going to be diving mm -hmm. into some of that tonight, Laura Jane, and you are you are the perfect uh, person to talk to about this. And, and I want to give our listeners, whether you um, are joining us live or if you're listening to the recording, I want to tell you a little bit about Laura Jane and why I think she's so special. Uh, Laura Jane is a yogi and a teacher. She's a speaker. She's an author. Uh, she's written two books, Feel Better Now and Simply Every Day or Simple Every Day Parental Radiance. And both of her books are available on Amazon. And I've known Laura Jane for a really long time. And what I will tell you about her is that she is just one of those women who I'm certainly fortunate to know and have in my life. And she is the epitome and the walking embodiment of her work. And her work is around body and mindset, emotional and spiritual connection. And she is the real deal. Uh, she, you, uh, if you know Laura Jane, you can refer to her as LJ or the Yoga Muse. And uh, I think Laura could write a whole synopsis or a whole book on on the Muse and connecting to the Muse. And mm -hmm. and I'm just so so thrilled to have her with us tonight. And our topic uh, for those of you that have registered, you know, uh, obviously you knew what the topic was when you signed up. And originally, Laura Jane and I talked about what are you waiting for. Like, what in the world are you waiting for? And I just want to be really clear. When I say, what are you waiting for? I'm really saying, what are we waiting for? Mm -hmm. um, but the, the, we decided that that was kind of the subtopic. And the topic that we ended up landing on was day one or one day. Mm -hmm. And so the point being is that are we going to keep saying, okay, one day I'm going to write that book. One day I'm going to lose that weight. One day I'm going to launch that podcast. One day I'm going to sell my possessions and become a minimalist or move to Montana or move to Beverly Hills or buy that car or get rid of that car or whatever it is for us. So is that going to be one day or is today going to be day one? And so Laura Jane and I are going to dive into that topic and Patty's going to join in and I see that Chris King just joined us. So Chris, welcome. And uh, Laura Jane and I are going to kind of kick off the conversation. And then as we go, this is really meant to be conversational. So uh, please jump in if you have any questions for myself or for Laura Jane. Uh, we would love to have you join the conversation or share with us if you have any questions. And as we go along also, I'll be sharing some things in the chat box, links to books that we talk about, Laura Jane's contact information, my contact information, and anything else that we share that we think is particularly delicious on tonight's conversation. So, uh, so Laura Jane, I would love to hand this over to you and uh, maybe you can share with us a little bit if you have had a particular experience where tonight's topic really resonated with you, where you could give us an example or, uh, or just share with us something that you have seen where this tends to be particularly problematic and challenging, uh, which I 
it, and it's definitely not exclusive to women, although I see it a lot with women, I think more than with men. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd, I'd love to you to speak a little bit to that. Like what is your own personal experience been with what are we waiting for? And is, is this day one or is mm -hmm. it one day? Yes. Well, wow, thank you so much. And yeah, so interesting how I really came to this all with an interest in wellness, definitely, and even on health. And I think that's one of the places that we see when we don't listen to those creative impulses, when we don't take that action, that's one of the places we see it show up in, right, is in mm -hmm. our physical health, in our wellness. And maybe the beauty of that is sometimes we're able to respond to that when we have a physical ailment or a disease or a something big that really comes up like a, a healing crisis almost or a health crisis. It can be this invitation back into even the body and even to what's behind some of that. And yeah, I've become fascinated over the years with what mm -hmm. is behind some of, some of those ailments, some of those things that'll come up through the body and even things like, mood um challenges right that can be so extreme with even things like mental health i feel like it affected but yeah how important is that creative impulse and our following it whether it's about our creating a garden or losing that weight or writing the book whatever it is right that when especially when we don't follow it and we're not doing it it definitely has this impact on us right mm -hmm. this, this energetic impact and definitely shows up often in our health and wellness in various ways. And that's often our wake up call, right? That'll get us to look at why we're feeling out of balance or slow us down enough to have time to listen to ourselves, to realize what we're really wanting and needing and seeing we want to shift. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But perhaps I'm, I'm also thrilled to think what if we could get more in tune with ourselves so that we don't need the, the physical crises even right to call us back in so that was you know my invitation into the fascination with how much that creative impulse is part of our our well-being and even just our purpose and being on the planet right and how much it's part of how we're going to feel and what we can do to take care of ourselves in ways that can help us be more in flow right mm -hmm. so that we can be taking those actions is definitely what my work has become more and more about. So it's certainly been through my own revelations with myself. It always, that's part of what's always part of what I'm sharing, but with the hundreds of people I've gotten to work with, a lot of people coming to me with chronic pain, but seeing that eventually when we get to go at it more like mind, body, soul, we get to see it's often there's like magic underneath the pain, right? And that when we can listen to it and address it and, find ways to take care of ourselves and tune ourselves, we can to look at, for instance, how much the waiting, for instance, especially when we know we want to do something, how much that can put us out of balance, right? And create even some crises in our lives. So that's some of how I'm excited about it even, because I mm -hmm. see that there's just a, that's where I love to feel empowered as with the realization, like what can we do now with that awareness, <laughs> right? Like how important that is. Yeah. So, and you know, does that answer your question a bit? No. And, and it, well, it absolutely does. And it was, it was really more just wanting kind of your observation on things uh -huh. and, and what yeah. your, what your personal experience has been with Mm -hmm. uh, putting things off or procrastination. And, and it's interesting what you were talking about. Do, do you personally feel that it is primarily pain or something painful that ends up being the thing that perpetuates us into motion? Because I know what you were saying is that with the practice of wellness and the work that you're doing, like how great would it be if we didn't have to wait until we were in pain or until we were so uncomfortable but in your experience, is is that the is that kind of the catalyst ah. that you've seen that moves us forward, or or is there are there other tools that we can tap into right now? Like, and yeah. I know that you and I talked a little bit, LJ, about you know letting our listeners know like some tips that they could maybe start practicing right now, but. But I would just love to know if you think that pain is the catalyst that actually mm -hmm. creates the getting past resistance. 
Yes. Well, and I love that. I, and I think you're absolutely right because especially if we look at something like yoga and what do we think we're going for, if it is about more feelings of connection and even if we're thinking like spiritual connection, that so often our pain of various sorts is what gets us to go deeper, right? And to develop our spiritual connection. So in a sense, it can be about, I feel like part of what I see like things like yoga bring is not just the practices, but the perspectives and the psychology we can bring, right? And so even part of it is to see, like you're saying, that to just see even our current pain is serving us, right? And that there's, it's a catalyst. And it often can become the reason that we create things, right? To help others, like in that shamanic sense that the things we heal for ourselves become how, what we create, you know, and do to share with others. So I think the bringing in the perspective and the psychology right away that the pain is, can be this gift, this opening, this catalyst, right? Like Rumi would say, it's like where the light, the pain is the place where the light enters us. And, and that thing that really can bring us into that deeper connection that really is what we want more than anything, right? So mm -hmm. that I feel like is a tool to bring in just things that get us in that perspective more that, that can help us look at how there might be something in any painful situation that's serving us and where it could be a catalyst. So I think even just the perspective and the, the mindset, right, that we can come at it with and the things that get us in the perspective, the mindset, right, whether it's like our self-study or listening to a, a show like this, right, things that support us to respond to life in the ways that we want. And that would be a holistic approach, I would say, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, and one of, one of my favorite truth bombs of Danielle's is, uh, listen to your pain. It has something to teach you. Mm -hmm. And, and I really believe that. Um, and, but you know, Laura Jane, you and I were talking about this and I just want to let everybody know, like you're going, this is real life. <laughs> what do they say? Have to, hashtag real life. Um, my dog is going to be barking in the background and there's just, yep. There's real life happening, folks. So, uh, but Laura Jane, you and I were talking about the fact that doing this work, right? Whether it is yoga or exercise, and I and I want to say to Laura Jane, you, your practice, um, and I thought I felt like you framed it really beautifully. It's it's therapeutic meditation and personalized yoga. Um, and I think that most people think of meditation as, you know, either, you know, you have to sit there and try to try to quiet your mind. I've heard other people refer to meditation as what they do to manifest, um, which I, I don't, I think everybody's experience is their own. But to me, like mm -hmm. meditation is really about um, the experience of being in the body and of, of just being in the here and now, right now. Um, but I'd, I'd love to, you, I'd love for you to speak a little bit to this idea of therapeutic yoga. Uh, I, I'm sorry, therapeutic meditation and uh, yoga. And how do we, how do we access those types of practices yes. to, to potentially clear the way for this thing that we are waiting for? Because going back to today's topic, yes. what are we waiting for? Uh -huh. um, why not now, uh, day one or one day? Yeah. So how do we, how can we potentially look at the experience of personalized yoga and therapeutic meditation from your yeah. experience and your perspective to start to right. move things forward? Yes, I love that. It's a great question. And like the leading edge of what I'm excited about with my awareness of these practices. And yeah, because what I would say with the personalized yoga, Again, I really love to preach and teach and share every time I talk about yoga, that yoga really just means union or connection or to join. So what I mean by personalized yoga is finding things that work for you personally that help you reconnect and building that into your more like everyday life to take care of you, to tune you, to help you keep reconnecting in various ways, meaning reconnecting with your yourself, reconnecting with your, your heart, your soul, your sense of God and spirit, reconnecting with your body as part of it, right? So I love to share that, first of all, anything really could be a form of yoga, mm. but I love to share 
lots of the tools that I love that people listening probably have found that they like. So they can now realize it's a form of yoga, right? Something that reconnects them and do more of it. So like one of them for sure is journaling. It's a really big practice. I know you and I both use that a lot. Okay. And I always share that that's a form of yoga because it definitely reconnects us. It's definitely a form of meditation too. And it gives us a chance to tune into ourselves. It gives us a chance to like brain drain. It's very grounding. It does bring us into the body. It's very reconnecting too, right? Because you're talking to someone <laughs> and you're listening, right, to yourself. So it's very therapeutic and it's um, an energetic practice too. So all those things can be part of a yoga practice. Um, but then for sure, the classic thing that we all know about in yoga is those poses, which can be amazing therapy, especially when what I do personalize and why I think that's the best way is when we line up with some poses that are just right for our current body, our current health, our current goals, just gentle enough, but maybe also just enough work sometimes too, if that's part of what we want to gently remedy what might be feeling out of balance to do some, it does some postural therapy that also really changes how we feel realigns us structurally like a chiropractor was does really changes how we feel energy work we're doing to ourselves with poses. We're also releasing stored trauma. So yeah, even just lining up with like one or two poses that maybe you already know you like, or, you know, getting some help from someone like me who can help you connect with that adding that to your day and then realizing while you're in that pose or that position or even on a walk or dancing or in the bath, that it's about the inner approach that saying, I want to make this about connection, right? I want to make this about connecting more with myself. It's all still a form of meditation. Um, so yeah, adding, realizing that lots of things can be forms of yoga and then honing in on what works for you and starting to add that more like every day is mm -hmm. what I mean by personalized yoga. So I like to help people find that, figure that out, especially with the poses, but with the other practices too, because they can be so powerful and it's fun to kind of layer the practices, right? I think that's a, a name that some people use. And then is there anything you want to say before I go on and talk about the um, therapeutic meditation and what I mean by that? I would love to. I think back in the day, like in the, 70s or even the 80s when yoga was not necessarily the hip cool thing to do like people were still doing jazzercise or Jane Fonda or you know joining Gold's Gym and then the whole bodybuilding wave like really hit mainstream um, and so yoga 20 years ago wasn't um, being used the way it is today and it certainly didn't have the the um, I think therapeutic is a really great word for it. I don't think people were necessarily uh, the mass public was connecting to the therapeutic benefits of yoga, um, mm -hmm. but they also weren't looking at yoga as being as hips looking cool as it is today. So one of the things that you were talking about with like the postures and the poses um, and going back again to our topic about what are you waiting for? I'd also love to address that this is not about perfection. This isn't about like, can you grab your foot and pull it up mm -hmm. over your head or, Never. you know, <laughs> and, and I see these, you know, really beautiful yogis and followers and practitioners of yoga you know, doing the, the most incredible things with their body. And so one of the things I just really want to address and just say for anyone who's thinking about this, um, a couple things that you can work with them online, you can work with them via Skype, you can work with them in person, mm -hmm. but that they don't have to feel intimidated, like, oh my gosh, I have to be able to, you know, hold a plank for 30 minutes or do these really, and they're beautiful, the poses are gorgeous, but, you know, like for me, Laura Jane, I have to, uh, I refer to my knees as being very moody. And, um, and so there's a lot of things that I, I have limitations to what I can and cannot do in yoga. And, and I would hate to think that there are other people who, like I have put off the practice because I was afraid of the limitations of them, you know? Yeah. So, so not only, not only do I see this as twofold, one mm -hmm. that, that personalized yoga and therapeutic meditation, which I know you're going to talk about are both conduits to getting past these things that we are resisting um, and getting on the other side of it. But two, that it is 
also nothing to be afraid of, right? That there is, that we all begin somewhere. And then I think the beauty of part of this, and I think it's interesting, this connection, um, is that starting exactly where we're at, you know, and not being intimidated by comparison that so many of us get caught up in, um, you know, that this is really about what is good for our body, what is going to help us mentally and emotionally get past the resistance so that we can get to the thing that we really want, creating or delivering or bringing to life or being a better person to ourselves and our relationships, change our home, change a Mm -hmm. current situation. Yeah. Um, I think that that is like, that's the key, but, but how, um, but knowing that we can begin exactly where we're at and that, and that that's perfect, that that is good enough, that there is no there, there. Yes. Oh, I'm so glad you brought that up too, because really what I love to share whenever I get to even talk about and teach the poses is really the poses, for instance, are meant to be a symbolic practice and a place that we're Every time we do them, we're practicing these things like you're talking about. Like every time we start a practice, we're intended to like just check in with where we're starting from and notice how are we doing? How am I feeling? And just be ready to honor that and work with that in a gentle, loving way. Like, so it's a chance to actually practice that every time you're practicing. And so that's why, yeah, I'm very into sharing that the time with the poses, in my opinion, is never meant to be a time that we're pushing into pain and that for a lot of us it's not appropriate to do a lot of those fancy (laughs) tricky poses um, because it really is about that internal approach that time to let it be a symbolic practice of how you're being with yourself how you're working with yourself even through how you're dealing with your body through these poses you're taking it through but yeah I'm not into trying to take anyone through any poses that are gonna hurt or make anything worse Um, Or, or, but it's exciting to see how it's a place to do that and practice that, and that's why it's really a system of psychology more than anything, and just to be Mm. more in the moment, and yeah. So go, and then I'm, and I do want to share more how I see that can relate to this. Why aren't we doing the things we want to be doing thing too? Right. So I will talk about that. But is there something you wanted to say before I? Oh no, I I was just reiterating the fact that that comparing ourselves to these, you know, flexible, um, you know, doll-like, and I, and I just mean simply in the fact that they can pull their legs over their heads and, you know, wrap them around their neck or what have you, that they're, that it is completely, um, a waste of our entire beingness to try to compare ourselves to that. So, and just that, that you, that even though you can personally, do a lot of these poses and that, that you have that practice that you are not that kind of teacher, you know, that you, that you are really connected to the individual, um, and their practice and what it is that they are wanting to attain and gain from their practice, which I think perfectly leads us into your therapeutic meditation and what that's all about. Yeah. And and just before you go there, um, I just wanted to say that, uh, I, I gave up on yoga because, you know, mm-hmm. I took a lot of yoga classes and yeah. things and, and I really liked the idea of yoga, yeah. but I yeah. did like the go from step one to two to three to four yeah. to five, you yeah. know, and, and I found that there were, it, it, it's exactly like you said, there were a handful of poses that when I did them, I felt so powerful mm. and so connected and so I made up my own little routine that uh, had, you yeah. know, those five or six poses. Uh, yeah. You know, it's like the sun salutation and the warrior and the tree pose. And, you know, those things make me feel good. They make me feel mm-hmm. powerful, you know. Mm, yeah. And so it is therapeutic to me and it is a connecting practice. And it's something I'll do because they in, in my world, in my way, you know, they just... One goes to the next, and I'm telling myself a story as I go through them all, uh, you know, ooh. and then end at the final with the child's pose and the cobra and back and forth a few times. And to me, that's just submission and opening up, submission and opening up. So mm. oh, that's beautiful. You've added your own like meaning and intention to it. And yeah, yeah, because if it, yeah, because I came to really my yoga teaching with already having some chronic pain, even though I had been an athletic person. So 
I was trying to work out my chronic pain and I have, and now that's a lot of the ways I work with people is people who are in pain. Cause I've learned some great ways to fix a lot of stuff, but yeah, I, and I don't need, I don't even want to do a lot of that tricky stuff with my body. I just want to feel good. <laughs> so uh, I'm very, but I'm very interested in sharing that it's not what a lot of people think it is and it really should never hurt. And even things like sun salutes are way too much for a lot of people these days. Like mm -hmm. that's awesome. That feels great for you, Patty. But for a lot of people, we could do a lot of things to get ready for that because mm -hmm. even those are, uh, are not, are too much and they do get us hurt. And then again, with the symbolic practice of this, if it could be a place to be more listening to ourselves, more honoring with ourselves, more loving with ourselves. If something hurts and it doesn't feel appropriate, it's not very loving or honoring to do it anyways. Mm -hmm. that, to me, would, that would not be a yoga approach. It yeah. would be a yoga approach to say, well, that doesn't feel like a good fit for me, so mm -hmm. I'm not going to do that. And that's where it can also be tuning us into more like a sense of intuition and acting from that inner knowing and even realizing how our body's a part of that. So even moments in the poses can be a place to practice that. But a part of that is just not even doing a lot of poses that are just not appropriate because so intuitively, a lot of people will, I think, drop mm -hmm. out of yoga. They might think, Oh, I should be going, but I think their classes that they tried probably weren't appropriate. So that's where it is really nice. If you can get lined up with something that's safe and appropriate and it works really fast and well. And when you bring it home, like you did, Patty, that's why I'm actually, that's the main way I share it is, to help people bring it home because mm -hmm. if you bring it home and do a little each day it works even better even though group classes can be wonderful community uh yeah to me it's the it's the best especially modern and um fastest way to use the poses especially to make changes and, and make sure you don't hurt yourself too mm -hmm. yeah Beautiful. so i'm glad to hear that from you all but that's um been your experience because i feel very um uh, impassioned to share that yoga is not what a lot of people think it is yeah um, so and then part of two what I see and this goes with the talking about the meditative aspects because really any time that we practice yoga it's intended to be a time of meditation so, and they're very inner you could say like yoga is a form of meditation right You're like yoga is about connection and meditation is really about our attention and our focus so I like to share also that anything can be a form of meditation and so, yes, even those poses are intended to be a time of meditation or like journaling is a time of meditation. Um, but the ways I see meditation can be so simple and therapeutic is it's a time to listen to ourselves, no matter how we're doing it. Right. And to get in that non-judgment, which is really helpful. Mm -hmm. And so that right away is going to be part of helping us with that moving into what we want to be doing. Right. Because the more we're listening to ourselves, the more we're going to keep hearing that. Oh, yeah, I wanted to start playing the ukulele, right? Or whatever it was. So that's part of the bonus of listening to ourselves more like it or not, we're going to hear that creative impulse, impulse more, right? And then we also get to do work that's also changing our energy. And so in meditation, right, we also get to quiet the mind with a lot of these practices. And that can be helpful for changing the momentum of the thoughts, which can be part of what's putting us in resistance, right? And it can also just give us a, a break from the thoughts that aren't helping. Also the quiet moments that we can create is a time where we might feel even more spiritually connected, which could be a lot of why we're practicing. And, and then also we get to really redirect the mind with meditation and kind of purposely start to use it more in a way that works for us. Mm -hmm. um, like imagination, right? It, we do know it's so important what we're imagining. So I just feel like tapping into all those realms with these practices, we are both becoming more aware of what we're wanting to be doing. We're clearing ourselves energetically and even awareness wise, you know, with the things that may be holding us back. And then, yeah, but then it is still about coming into life and knowing it's time to take the action, but we are doing more to clear ourselves, you know, to tune ourselves is the word I really like to tune in each day more and to tune even up how we're feeling in various aspects, how we're flowing, releasing that stress and resistance and stored trauma and other people's energy that might be part of the resistance, right? And yeah, and then even just more aligned to create from there too. Oh, and that's the best part I'll mention before I'll stop and let you all talk, <laughs> is yeah, seeing that great. really the creative inspiration, the magical moments that are possible in things like meditation and yoga is like the most exciting part, right? The aha 
channeling moments of inspiration could be what we're even like going for most, right? With our alignment, with our tuning, those realizations, the solutions, the next steps come to us more, right? When we're building in that time to listen to ourselves, when we're doing things to tune ourselves. And so, yeah, that's what I feel is exciting is that we can see that's what we're doing with our practices. And um, yeah, to be aware that that's part of the experience that we might start to get those revelations, those insights, those next ideas, or maybe that's what we're definitely going for in meditation. And then it is about acting on them though, right? And then maybe that's about having the right ways that we're supporting ourselves to, to do that. Like having friends like you can find here, right? <laughs> that remind you to take action. So Absolutely. yes, there's my, that's my answer to that. And, and Laura Jane, I want to ask you too, because again, I, you know, I, I think that meditation is a really personal experience and I think the more you do it, the better. And I, and I don't mean the better that you get at it, like it's something to become a professional at, but the more proficient, the less distracted, the more, um, the more dedicated you are to it. I think your discipline increases. And what I think is really interesting is that I know some people who come to meditation, they're like, well, I'm going to go meditate on a question. And I think that what happens with practice in my experience is that I don't even need to come with a question. Like the yeah. answers just, they, uh -huh. they come. Yeah. Um, and sometimes it might be something that seems like, gosh, I, I don't, I have no idea where that even came from. But like you said, like, these aha moments or these moments of inspiration. And, and what I want to emphasize too is that, it, and, and I'm focusing on this primarily because this is your area of expertise, but that this in fact is a tool, is a conduit to getting past resistance, yeah, to getting right. on the other side of, of the thing that we tend to be, um, you know, putting off or the thing that we are avoiding, like there's so many answers. Actually, mm. all of the answers are here, right? Like, yeah. Right. like yeah. one of my right. core beliefs is that if you want to find out, right, yeah. if you want to find out why, why you're not launching, moving, letting go, losing weight, whatever it is, if you want to find out, you have to go in. Right, right. You have and to that go says in. it so simply. And if we just see that even to see that things like yoga and meditation, if we like those words, are all about anything that helps us go within, right? Yes. And that's where it's nice to be open to what that might be for you, whether it is a pose or a walk or a bath or time in the journal or time in nature or music, there, it, dancing, right? There's so many things that can be that for us. Yes. Any sort of creating can be that for sure. And, right. you know, and I, and I want to address this too. And I, and I have like four books sitting here to my right. Um, and I'm obviously not going to get to everything that I would like to share with everybody. But, um, but I think too, I, I think it's really imperative um, that we give ourselves at least the opportunity or the permission to really acknowledge that we do have the answers right? That, that the thing that we are craving mm. the most, the thing that, that keeps getting in the way, that we really do have the answers. And Laura Jane, yeah. is, is it your YouTube channel or um, where do you do your tune in? Is it tune in to you? Uh, I call it tune you. Uh, like I have like a tune you show that I do video broadcast on different platforms. So I do stream, I put them all on my YouTube, which is one of the links that you provided. So often it's just, it could be either just me making videos or different conversations I'm having with people. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I wanted to share this. So this is one of my favorite authors. Um, oh, yes. Uh-huh. I haven't gotten that one yet, but I have the other one and it's like, uh, yeah, that's changed my life. And it's part yeah, of what we're talking about. Please. It is. And I, and Stephen I Pressfield, you, right? Yes. Stephen Pressfield. Mm -hmm. This particular book is called, and um, Patty, can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. Now you can. Uh, so Stephen Pressfield wrote, uh, one of my other favorite books called the war of art and Laura Jane, one of the things that I love that you do with your practice is that you really incorporate creativity, uh, which again, I think is a, you know, I, I don't think that that typically goes along with the conversation around yoga, but, mm -hmm. but I know that it's a really big part of your practice as well. Uh, but this is what I wanted to share. 
Let me get to the right page here. Uh, love it. I mark them. Mission. Okay, where'd you go, Stephen? Okay. Oh, there it is. Okay. One second, girls. Oh, here it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Stephen talks about um, really, really candidly his own experience and his own relationship to resistance. Yeah. And, um, and the reason that I wanted to address this is because I'm such a big fan of transparency and authenticity and the truth. And in this book, Stephen talks about, so it's, it's three things. There's the amateur, there's the pro, and then there are the answers, right? The muse, the mystic. Um, and this, in this part of the book, it's my, my own moment of turning pro. So mm -hmm. this particular book is called Turning Pro, Tap Your Inner Power and Create Your Life's Work. Mm -hmm. uh, but Stephen knows better than most that what keeps us from going there, from achieving the thing that we're saying that we want the most um, is resistance. And so he's really yeah. good at speaking yeah. directly to resistance and what we can do about it. Mm -hmm. So this is from Stephen, my own moment of turning pro. The following is from the chapter called Resistance Healing in the, Art, in the War of Art. I washed up in New York a couple of decades ago, making 20 bucks a night, driving a cab and running away full time from doing my work. One night alone in my $110 a month sublet, I hit bottom in terms of, in terms of having diverted myself into so many phony channels so many times that I, could, that I couldn't rationalize it for even one more evening. I dragged myself out of my ancient, I dragged out my ancient Smith Corona typewriter, dreading the experience as pointless, fruitless, meaningless, not to say most of all, the pain, the most painful exercise I could possibly think of. For two hours, I made myself sit there, t torturing out some trash that I had chucked immediately into the shit can. That was enough. I put the machine away. I went back into the kitchen. In the sink sat 10 days of dishes. For some reason, I hadn't even had the excess energy to wash them, but for this moment, I decided I would. The warm water felt pretty good. The soap and the sponge were doing their thing. A pile of clean plates began rising in the dish rack, and to my amazement, I realized that I was whistling. Mm -hmm. Then it hit me. I had hit... Then it hit me that I was turning a corner. I was okay. I would be okay from here on. Do you understand what I'm saying? I hadn't written anything good. It might be years before I would ever write anything good at all, but that didn't matter. What counted was that after all of these years of running from it, mm -hmm. I actually sat down to do my work. Yeah. Ah. So I think for me, um, the fact that he was writing something that he felt was complete shit, he felt that the muse was gone, he felt that he'd lost his magic, he may as well pack it in and go be a janitor or a salesman or go work at Starbucks. Um, but he went in and he did the dishes that had been sitting there for 10 days, and all of a sudden he found himself whistling. Mm, right, 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 so this, yes. This long uh, shift. Yes. And, then, and then he went back to his typewriter and he mm -hmm. sat down knowing that he might not write anything good for days or weeks or ages, but he knew that no matter what, that he was going to stick to it. Mm -hmm. And I just, when I read that, I just thought, gosh, what if we applied that? Right. What if we took five minutes to do some therapeutic meditation or what if we took five minutes to go do the dishes or sit down and mm -hmm. do some healing or just go for a walk or go for yeah. a drive or uh, call a friend? Yeah. Right. What if we did something to mm -hmm. change the energy around, to shift the perspective and then to take an action accordingly. And so Ooh, yeah. you and Laura Jane, I'd love to know if you've had an experience that you can oh, recall yeah where you were really in it, 
And then something happened. There was some shift where you could see the light of day again, where you could breathe, where the, where optimism and possibility were awake again and let themselves be known. Ah, gosh. Well, I mean, I know that I feel just, I am so fascinated. I just made a video a couple days again, ago again about this because I have about the power of pausing between our activities and especially, yeah, I think I have really come to see that when I'm really not feeling great emotionally or physically, that I now see it's a yogi response to slow down and pause and see what I can do to shift things, right? And very simply, it can be such simple things. So gosh, I feel like I'm living like that all the time. Where And so I do see that part of my practice has helped me just be more tuned into myself throughout the day so that even sooner I could catch that, right? And be ready to respond. Mm -hmm. And, and that's where I have loved to share that you can use any of these practices, which even could just be taking one deep breath, right? We all have seen how even just pausing for one slow, deep breath can make such changes. So, but just how mm -hmm. staying on top of how we're feeling, it makes it easier to respond, right? But yes, we can use these practices responsively right when we notice we really need them to just more and more have these tools we can go to whether it's something with the breath or something with the body even more like a pose or taking a walk or going in nature or going to the journal and just being but also the more tuned into ourselves we are the sooner we know to go to that right and the more preventatively we're using these practices i think the less dramatic maybe our experience will be so um Gosh, I'm thinking, okay, yeah, I do have an experience where I can share how, because one of my practices that really, really helps me that I build in almost in a weird way is gratitude. Like I'm so impressed with the power of gratitude and appreciation mm. that I purposely write gratitude lists every day as part of my journaling, like kind of very disciplined with my gratitude. It seems like strange, but I really saw the value of that recently because as I had a little like a health thing come up this summer where I wound up in the hospital for the first time and things that felt so scary and terrible even though they really weren't my gratitude I realized helped me so much and I know that it even changed the whole experience but I realized I was really strong in my gratitude because I've been practicing it so much mm. so that was really Beautiful. And then I do believe it changed my experience even to be in a place of gratitude, right? And just be noticing all the beautiful care I was getting and just how glad I wasn't anything, it wasn't anything worse. And you know how much that changed my experience and probably helped me heal faster too, right? To Absolutely. use my gratitude that I'll use, whether I do it in my journal or on a walk, I might just kind of list to myself what I'm thankful for. I love playing with gratitude practices. So, and I would say that's totally a form of yoga or even meditation right because you're playing with your focus and your attention and it's reconnecting you right and even gratitude is such a spiritually reconnecting frequency right that's part of the the shift of it is it really gets us in that more spiritual approach like maybe more more how like spirit would see the situation or god or that sort of you so that's part of why it's such a powerful shift Mm -hmm. So yeah, that is an example I'm thinking of that I realized how much that served me and that I could keep using it, right? Even if I could have my tears and if it still had its hardship, it definitely made it so much smoother to be strong in my gratitude. So I got to use it preventatively and responsively, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. You know, when I, when I was a kid, I started playing guitar in uh, like seventh or eighth grade and it was... Uh, it became just a part of me. It was an everyday part of me. And, and there was a time where I could not imagine not having a guitar in my hands. And mm -hmm. I played and I played really well. That was, that was part of the joy of it was that I loved it so much and I played really, really well. And then uh, a lot of stuff happened um, and I ended up, I stopped playing. Uh, probably in my early 20s, mm. set it aside, didn't touch it, didn't play with it at all. And hear music was such an important thing to me. And that 
and playing guitar and singing from my heart was such an extension of myself that that was just, that was gone. Mm. And over the years, it, I mean, it, it, it was literally, it was as I got, I, I don't know, in my fifties, I started thinking, I miss that. I wish mm -hmm. I could do that. And I would, mm -hmm. I had a, an old guitar that had actually been my guitar as a kid that I had given to my oldest son and he had given it back to me. And so it was, it was awful <laughs> by this time, if you can imagine. And I would pick it up and I was so disappointed because I couldn't play the way I did back then. And mm -hmm. so then I would set it down and it was mm -hmm. like, if I can't be perfect, mm -hmm. I'm just not going to do it. Mm -hmm. And yep. it wasn't it, when, when Joel, my, my other son passed away, something inside of me said, and, and it was one of those middle of the night things, go pick okay. up your guitar. Wow. And I started playing then and I would connect with him mm -hmm. and I'm not any good still. I mean, I'm not, I, yeah. and I had to give up competing with my former self. Yeah. that it's um, not going to be like that. What I'm after is the joy and the connectedness that I need um, out of that um, and wow. the creativity that comes from, from being able to do that. And so I'm, I'm really grateful that that's, that's come. I bought a brand new guitar. My, my kids and my husband went together and bought it for me for my birthday. Um, so I'm 65 years old and I'm playing guitar again and, um, and loving it. And I think that's so important. And I'm, I'm so noticing how much that's part of our well-being, right? Especially if we found something like that, that really works for us. And then we don't do it. Yeah. I think it's really related to a lot of even like our feelings of depression and anxiety. Yeah. And when we, Absolutely. if we, especially if we found some creative outlets and then we suddenly give them up, I mean, I'd be surprised if we don't feel a difference. Right. Yeah. But that's so interesting what you bring up too, how we get in this challenged relationship with our, our, art right because we're judging it so it's mm -hmm. that's where it's this dance right and if we can see it as a connecting practice right versus a performing <laughs> opportunity perfection. right and perfection um, requiring it to be perfect yeah. which takes that all judgment. the joy out right? Of it. right yeah that judgment right which yes. that's where i love how i see that's one of the therapies of yoga and meditation is one of the big things is non-judgment you always want to bring in that non-judgment right so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh yeah, I, I included that in our chat, Laura Jane, at 606. I said, yes, non-judgment, um, because you right. were talking about coming to yoga and coming to a meditation practice uh, with no judgment. And Patty, just like what you were saying, and I'm so thrilled for you that you've come back to music. And Laura Jane has shared with me that something she's always wanted to do is learn a musical instrument, right? Yes. So I was wondering if you remember that. I've been oh, saying oh. that's one of the things. Just yes. yesterday I was saying, I've been hearing myself say this, like I played the flute when I was a kid, but it wasn't necessarily so joyful. So, But for years I've been knowing, I'd love to be playing this instrument. And I keep hearing myself say that I'll meet musicians. I'm like, oh yeah, I'd love. So we all have those things, right? That yeah. That's where it's the non-judgment to be like, oh, I have some of those things that I told. And I have my daughter's ukulele across the room right now. Like uh -huh. that's one of those. I picked it up a little bit. And again, I'm not trying to become good at it even. I just yeah. like the idea of it and just like stringing one you know, moment in a yeah. Zen way would be, because I know like sound is so amazing as a oh. tool of therapy and transformation and energy work, right? And connection, like Huge. whether you make the sound or listen to the sound, it's, it's, we're starting to really see how much that <laughs> tunes us literally, right? Yes, yeah. So, so yeah. I, so I got to get to, yeah, I'm going to keep evolving into my, um, maybe today, one day, if not tomorrow, let's see, that's my one day. That's right. See, that's where maybe it helps to really, it does seem to help to have community though, right? Like this. Yeah. And that is actually a, a limb of yoga is the importance of supportive, spiritual, even community. And I think that's where we can see with our creativity and our doing the thing is having people around us who are going to be with us and say, and so like, okay, so you're going to start today, <laughs> right? <laughs> Instead of that also like oh yeah me too i have that thing maybe next week maybe next year right yeah so that's where it is interesting to look at our relationships that are um supporting us right or being having people that even inspire us that make us want to take more action right <laughs> yeah and laura jane i was not about to have patty share that gorgeous story and then not bring up that you want to play an instrument <laughs> ah, so. i didn't remember if i had told you that but obviously i've been telling some of my friends that so. 
No, I think I it's, really, someone else that. it's really important. And, and I think for me, you know, Patty, you were saying like, you were really good at it and you would always play and you had this really beautiful practice. And for me, it was connected to exercise and movement. And I was athletic my whole life. And when I was 18, I went to work at a, at a health spa and a gym. And I worked for Richard Simmons at the Richard Simmons Anatomy Asylum 100 years ago. Um, and I was always exercising. And if I went on holiday, I don't care if it was to Mazatlan or Switzerland, I was calling ahead of time and making sure that they had a gym. So I knew where I was going to work out. Cause at that point, you know, I wasn't really doing like, um, I don't know, calisthenics or isometrics or whatever they called it. Like I wanted to be in a gym. Yeah. And so I was religious about it. And then I started my own business. When I was 21 and did that for 10 years. And then all of a sudden, which often happens with us, the practice, the thing that made me feel so good um, it, it then became like, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. Oh, one day I'll get back to it or taking off one day, then taking off a week. It's not that big of a deal than taking off a month. But the truth of the matter is, is that, you know, as years go by and my body has changed and I've sustained some injuries, what I found where my resistance has been, um, is this feeling and this judgment, you know, going back to what you said, Laura Jane, about no judgment is this judgment of my body feeling like it's betrayed me. Mm -hmm. Um, and the idea of starting up again, you know, and again, you both have, have framed this so beautifully. And even what Steven said about sitting down to write and that he might not write something good for years, if ever, you know, and for me, part of my resistance to getting back to working out is, you know, like you said, Patty, like I want to be not only do I want to be in the same shape that I was back when, but I want to be able to sustain those types of workouts and not, and, and not be in pain. Yeah. But the truth of the matter is, is that not doing it is causing me by far mm -hmm. so much more pain mm -hmm. than, than, it, than I would ever, ever experience if I was actually right. just doing it. Right. So, so I'm just going to say here and now to you girls, like say it publicly. Um, it is day one. It's not one day. It is day yes. one. Um, day one. Fact, you are yes. finding your day one. Yes. Right. And, and I think you said it so clearly. That's the bottom line is it, it feels better to do the thing than to not do it. And it really does start mm -hmm. to get, even though there's something called resistance that makes us think we don't want to do the thing that gets us to even not do it it actually starts to become more and more painful, right? And starts to manifest as stuff. And it does. It actually feels better to actually do it, right? Than it absolutely, I, I have to share you share this with you, my exercise mm -hmm. story. I, I only exercise because I have to. I do not enjoy it. I will <laughs> never enjoy it. And even though I know it's, it's a, an antidote to my depression and stuff, I just, I only do it because I know my bones need it you know, mm -hmm. but I, years ago, I used to do kickboxing and I did like a 90 minute class and it was at the end of the class, you were, you were dead, you were drenched, you were, you know, wrung out and it was amazing. It was awesome. Well, that was then, this is now, and I'm not even capable of doing that. And just this morning, I was so excited. I, I, I have, um, a subscription to, um, uh, an online exercise thing and you can go in and pick all these different exercises to do and I found a kickbox class for people who are returning either returning from injury or reach or just beginning at a more advanced age so it was like a 25 minute kickbox class and it was freaking awesome and I was doing it and I was thinking kickbox at 65 um, look yeah, at me. Right, right. And it, it was what I could do and I felt um, so good you know yeah. and and instead of that I did competing with my younger self that's right I was doing what I could mm. do and it was amazing it was awesome it was so awesome yeah. Patty, good for you. And thank you so much for sharing that. That's, I mean, the, the timing of your story could not be more perfect. So <laughs> thank you. I, I will remember that when I'm at the gym tomorrow morning. So, um, <laughs> thank you. Were you going to say something, Laura Jane? Well, yeah, I, I just want, I love how the conversation has gone really. And that it's just, I think it is important to look at how important our creativity is to mm -hmm. our lives and our well-being and how we feel and that that means our creativity on any level right Absolutely. and 
but yet yeah, learning to love ourselves through it is really helpful and to be more gentle with ourselves through being creative even and that's where it's awesome to see how our practices can do that they can be a place to be practicing that self-love and embodying that more and getting better at that and then that can translate into our creating right absolutely darling well, ladies, it is uh, 6.33, and uh, I'm going to uh, I'm gonna take us out with a couple of short readings. And Laura Jane, before we call it a night, I just want to thank you so much for being with us tonight, for sharing your wisdom and your truth and uh, sharing your practices with us. And um, I just want to ask you really quickly before we wrap up, um, are there any tips or are there any uh, guidances or videos or anything that I could share in our chat box that, that you might like to share with our, with our listeners or our, our viewers that are watching the replay? Yeah, well, I would love to um, get you the links to, because on SoundCloud I have free audio meditations that are really short, just very simple ways to try meditation in a very very simple way and then I do I'll have a lot on YouTube so um, those are good ways to find my content yeah and where I'm doing a lot of creating so I'll I'll send those to you so you can post them here that would be great Laura Jane and uh, I'm going to also include a couple of links it was really incredible right before I got on the call tonight my husband was telling me about um, a Portuguese uh, filmmaker who will actually be 111 years old on December 12th. Mm -hmm. And, and he just made uh, another movie. So um, this is his name. I'm going to share this here in the chat. Mm. And uh, here is some information on him. Um, but talk about living life to the fullest. And, you know, if not now, when, um, what are we waiting for? Is this day one or one day? Um, yeah. I mean, he'll be 111 and he just, uh, he just did his next movie. So I thought that was pretty astounding. And I thought if any of us needed a little bit of inspiration, I wanted to share that here because it's so beautiful. And Laura Jane, thank you, honey, in advance for, um, for sending over your links as well. And Thank you for being with us tonight and being a beautiful, beautiful guest. I really appreciate it. You're amazing. And uh, lastly, uh, Laura Jane's contact information as well as her beautiful bio uh, is in the chat box as well. If you want to know more about Laura, if you want to reach out to her, take a class with her, ask her questions. If you're just coming back to exercise, if you're new to yoga, if you're recovering from an injury, um, don't be shy. Please reach out to her. She is the real deal, um, what you see is what you get. I mean, this is, this is her um, every day of the week. So I really encourage you to reach out to her. So thank you so much, Laura Jane. You were wonderful. Thank you so much, Shamari. My pleasure all around. <laughs> so uh, the first reading is from Turning Pro, and this is The Amateur Will Be Ready Tomorrow. I'm, I'm really speaking to myself when I say this. <laughs> uh, two Hollywood producers were talking. I've got good news, said one. I've got bad news. Give me the good news. Remember that mansion that we were trying to rent for that big party scene, but we couldn't get it because the cost was $50,000 for one night? Well, I just talked to the guy and he'll give it to us for $10,000. What's the bad news? He wants 100 bucks up front. <laughs> the sign of a sure amateur is that he has a million plans and they will all start tomorrow. <laughs> So ladies, here is, to, uh, here is to starting today on day one. And uh, the last uh, beautiful um, little treat I want to share with you is by Mary Oliver. And this is Mary Oliver. This is her gorgeous book called Devotions. So for those of you that don't know Mary Oliver, she is a wonderful, beautiful, prolific poet. And this is her poem called I Worried. Oops. So oh, great carpet. Hello. Are you still there? Oh. Uh -huh. Girls, are you still there? Yeah. Looks like you're sharing your page. 
Uh oh, maybe I messed it up by sharing that right now. <laughs> that's, that's okay, Lord Jane. I can I'm on back on now. <laughs> that's okay. I'll just go ahead All and share right. this. Uh, so this is by Mary Oliver. It's called I Worried. Uh, I, wor I worried a lot. Will the garden grow? Will the rivers flow in the right direction? Will the earth turn as it was taught? And if not, how shall I correct it? Was I right? Was I wrong? Will I be forgiven? Can I do better? Will I ever be able to sing? Even the sparrows can do it. And I am, well, hopeless. Is my eyesight fading or am I just imagining it? Am I getting rheumatism, lockjaw, dementia? Finally, I saw that worrying had come to nothing and I gave it up and I took my old body and we went out into the morning and we sang. Mm. So I'm going to leave us with that, my dears, that we are going to take our sweet, beautiful bodies at whatever age they are, and we are going to go out into the morning, and we are going to sing, and we are going to hopefully make this one day, and I just want to say this in closing, that when we come up against resistance, that when we suddenly come to and we realize that it's um, that we've missed day one or it's day three or it's day seven, that we just begin again, that we plug back yeah. into our practice and that every moment of every day, there is an opportunity for it to be day one. Yeah. So I wish you well, my friends, and thank you so much for being on tonight's Truth is the New Black and I'll see you next month. Bye thank everybody. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you.